Our visible universe is based on energy, waves and frequencies. What is energy? Energy is what is necessary to produce movement, deformation, heat, electricity, electromagnetic radiation or certain chemical reactions. But at its core, the material world consists only of light, which is energy, that flashes in and out, creating an energy code. And then the matter waves are a central part of the theory of quantum mechanics, what you can see on the pictures. Waves, we have different wave length and we have a special characteristic of waves. So the wave with its amplitude is going faster, slower, higher. And the higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength is. So we have energy, we have waves and we have frequencies. Great teachers of all times told us, for example, Heraclit, that everything flows, Pantare. Or Rudolf Steiner, a German anthroposophist, said, all life is rhythm. And Ramdas, he said, all life is dance. So rhythm as well, flow as well. And so is that frequencies and vibrations create the structures of matter and life. And every single element in the universe is vibrating at a particular frequency. So do your thoughts and feelings, including everything in your subconscious mind, are transmitting a particular vibration. How does the universe and those vibrations shape the life we are experiencing through individual resonance? So whatever we think, especially what we feel is vibrating on a fre frequency and through resonance we attract exactly that frequency back to us. So sometimes we attract things we are really not aware of why it is coming towards us but if we would dig a little bit deeper and we would have a look what is our belief pattern, what are we thinking underneath in our subconscious mind, then we would understand why something was attracted to us. It's always related to our own frequency we are sending out into the universe and then it is coming back. For example as well, let's say you are sitting on the couch and you are really relaxed and then you think of someone and you are emotional about it and you have the feeling, oh, you would like to uh, talk to your friend soon or you would like to um, see your friend soon and out of the blue the phone rings and the friend is on the phone. This is resonance. This is what you send out and someone else can go into resonance and is coming then towards us. The question of course would be who was thinking first? Your friend thinking of you or you thinking of your friend? Every frequency we can also measure. We can measure in Hertz or Volt. We can also measure in electroencephalogram for the, for the brain waves. And we can measure for the electrocardiogram, which is then the heart wave. We can measure wavelengths and speed. It can also be heard. So for example, if you would like to listen to a special radio station, for example, 101.3, then you need to tune into that and you need to find in on your radio exactly that sender. As well if, as musicians, they are using uh, 432 hertz, which is the earth heartbeat, and you can listen to that. You can move by the earth heartbeat only in listening to 432 hertz. There are as well planet frequencies out there so you can tune into planet frequencies like Mars or Sun or uh, Mercury or Venus just what you want. We also have voice recognition so we know that every single voice has a different vibration, a different yeah, a different sound and um, what we know as well from, from the voice is that we record someone saying something 
and we are then playing that record backwards, there is also a different message hidden in what we say. So we can run our voice forwards and backwards and we will see what someone really wanted to say in doing so. Then what counts for the radio is the same for the television. If you want to watch a special channel, then you need to tune into that frequency, into this, into this uh, length, wavelength of this special channel, as well as on the computer screen. So you need to, to know what program to run. And you can tune as well into pictures and colors where you can see through the color, uh, the frequency. And of course, the form as well is kind of a frequency too. It can be felt. Yeah, you can feel vibrations. When there's an earthquake, for example, then you can sense that. Um, you can sense sometimes, even in advance, when, let's say, the earthquake would be somewhere far away and you would be very sensitive, you could feel it. Or there are very sensitive people, they can feel and sense the vibration of water underneath. Then as well we can sense the frequency and the energy field of a person. So we feel either attracted to someone as we have a feeling, oh wow, that's the same wavelength. We are, we are resonating on the same wavelength or we can even feel repelled by it. So the frequency can be felt inside of us. We also are able with our hands to go over a body and we can feel the vibrations in the body. We can sense it, like uh, let's say even, even uh, the difference between cold and hot. So we can sense with the hand, uh, is there a high frequency it's vibrating very fast which would be heat or it's vibrating very slow which would be cold so we are able to sense that and to feel that the same with the sense for example a rose the essence of a rose is vibrating on a very high level and we can feel that in our body we have a special feeling for it and if it would be out of balance on that vibration some people call it the love vibration of the rose essence, uh, then it would heal something inside of us and it would resonate inside of us and it would give us this, the information of that frequency only through the essential oil. And we all are using that. We know about it. We just never started to understand it 100%. It is a knowing and understanding that is inside of us without um, without talking about it. Not until now. Now, of course, everything is visible and we have to talk about it because this is who and what we are. Frequencies can seen uh, as crystals, as water crystals. Uh, in Germany, of course, we have uh, in winter we have snow and when it is frozen, we have those crystals uh, on the on the on the window screen, so which, which is fascinating. But Dr. Masaru Emoto, he studied water crystals and he was uh, thinking of how do I bring a special vibration through a word uh, or through a sentence or through music into water. So he started to vibrate the water and informed the water through writing a special word on the glass where the water was inside and then he fr froze has frozen it and then he was looking under the microscope how the crystal was looking like. <clears throat> Here you can see it on the left side this is love, it's a, it's a crystal of love and appreciation and on the right side you see how anger looks like and you can see that on the left side the, harmo the, the harmony of it. So everything that is beauty, everything that is harm harmonious is something we feel attracted to. We are we love it. it. It's part of our own of our own well feeling and well being. As well as you can see that in the electrocardiogram of the heartbeat, you see how appreciation has has a vibration and a frequency. 
and waves and how anger looks like. We refer to us as well as a person. And Latin, a person is coming from personare. And personare means sonare is the sound, is we are, we resound. It sounds through us. So the vibration, the frequency is going through us and we are reacting to it. And sometimes we feel moved by it, as I said, with the music, for example. And the whole cosmos is made of these frequencies. And we are resonating to the frequencies of the cosmos. And we also can say um, the frequencies, there's even a huge potential there. And the moment we start to observe something or we want to see something, that frequency can resonate with our thought and then can collapse into our material world. To demonstrate a little bit how different uh, wavelengths looking or how different frequencies are looking, you can see from the brain, um, brain waves like the gamma waves, um, they are problem solving and concentration waves. This is when we are uh, able to get something out of, of a, a, a solution. Uh, the better state is always when we get up in the morning, we, are, we hurry and then we uh, rush to our work and we are busy, busy. And as long as we are busy, busy, we are not as much as receptive as we would be in alpha, theta, delta or gamma. So in the alpha waves, which then comes when we relax, when we are at home, when we are sitting on our sofa, um, and this is then when, when it's happening, when a friend is calling, if we are on the same alpha relaxed wavelength and where, where we feel just restful. Then when we go into the theta, this is when we really feel uh, a drowsiness and we really feel, oh, I have to go to bed and we are then going to bed. It's just this state shortly before we are falling asleep. And then we have the delta, the delta waves, and this is then when we really sleep and when we are dreaming, and yeah, and then we are in another reality, right? On the right side, you can see uh, how different heartbeats uh, look like when we measure them. So it is the normal heartbeat and the fast heartbeat when we are excited or anxious. The slow heartbeat, when we breathe, we do our breathing techniques and we really slow down. And the irregular heartbeat is when we are out of balance. This is always when we are out of balance. And I will explain later and you will see later uh, how actually the brain waves and the heart waves, those frequency are able to resonate and to, to balance. Let's see how our body actually is made of frequencies uh, in a very individual way. So our organs, they have really their own frequency spectrum. So it is not the same for the brain than for the heart or for the lungs. Uh, it's a really different frequency where it manifests itself. So um, when we are thinking of that, when then we know that if a brain or a heart of anything in our body is out of balance but if we know there's a special frequency that is able to bring us back into that harmony into that balance then of course we can use it so then we can say oh wow yeah we can use the frequency and we rebalance the organ we rebalance the body and um, yeah and then we feel better and the organ is is back in, into perfect health and, and well-being. We know that uh, actually when we have organ transplants, we know of course on one hand the immune system recognizes that this is an organ from someone else and we need to suppress it. But that has to do as well with this slightly different individual frequency of every, of every organ. And now, as I said, we can even see how the heartbeat and the brain waves, how they, they harmonize uh, itself. So you can see on the left side, there is someone 
the brain wave is, is different than to the heartbeat wave. And then someone comes towards this person and, and gets um, in touch with this person, is holding hands and gets in resonance. And out of the blue, the brain and the heart are resonating on the same frequency. They start to, to, to go into resonance and, and to, to resonate on the same frequency. And that's beautiful because this is an explanation for uh, how beautiful it is uh, to touch someone and to, to have healing hands and to be close to someone which is then harmonizing everything and gives us the feeling that we are, yeah, that we are not alone. There is someone uh, with care and looking after us and, and that just harmonizes everything. Also our DNA, our DNA uh, is actually a, a receiver and a sender. And there was um, an experiment done, a human DNA was put into a vacuum field with biophotons. And the photons normally are just jumping around by accident. They are going in all kinds of dire directions with no, no stationary being somewhere. But then when the DNA was in the field, the bio photons started just to vibrate exactly by the geometry of the DNA, as you can see here on the picture. So the moment we, we um, have the exact frequency, we are able just to resonate, to resonate and to attract and, and to get in touch with what we want to be in touch. As well, we are uh, resonating with, with whole groups. So for example, we know that from slow motion um, YouTube videos, I didn't find it, uh, otherwise I would have shared it with you. Um, so for example, if there is a concert and the audience starts after a little while just to resonate and to move together with the, with the musicians. So everything then starts to go and, and vibrating and resonating with the music they play and it looks beautiful to watch that. Perhaps I find it and I will share uh, in the group later um, so that you can see. And dancers all over the world and in all cu cultures surrender to the rhythms of music. We are all um, able and love, for example, to, to go with the rhythm of drums to, to ground us and uh, allow these, these frequencies and this music um, to drive us, to move us, and to allow us to experience frequencies uh, with the whole body. Also, frequencies are shared. So, for example, there is a dog and his, uh, or a, a young boy and his dog, and the moment they come together, um, you can see how the, uh, the heart rhythm is resonating and starting uh, to be in the same frequency so they resonate and they, they harmonize together and when they leave then they go back into their, their own rhythm. So we can say and uh, we experience that all together don't we? So we can say that if we are able to have the right frequencies and access to it, that we are able to activate our self-healing, so to go back into our blueprint, to speed up healing processes. If we are wounded or if we had some uh, injuries or accidents, and that we are able to rebalance our whole emotional and mental system towards well-being. And Dr. Karen Mac. Mackin, she wrote uh, the Resonance Effect book and I really would suggest if you want to understand it more and to go deeper into that, that you just uh, look into that book and read about it. She did a lot of studies and she found thousands of different frequencies that is now available for us to use as microcurrents uh, where she has a lot of experience and pictures um, to see what it does for our bodies in 
in regards to healing and self-healing. And that started actually already in the 1900s, in the beginning of the 1900s, when Dr. Reif was able through frequencies to see under the microscope what frequencies did to, for example, microorganisms or blood cells or uh, bacteria. So he was able to see that using different frequencies to see if what a cell does or what a, what a microorganism does. Unfortunately, he was so successful that all his knowledge and wisdom was hidden for a long time. But uh, now, you see, nothing can be hidden forever. So the truth is out and we are able and have access to these frequencies and support us in many ways of our being. The most important part for us, uh, if we are looking into well-being and longevity, so we are, we are actually born with the energy matrix, and this energy matrix is 24 times 4, which means every 24 years we are losing around 10% of our inherited energy. And after we lost all of that in 40%, actually 40% of, of uh, our energy, uh, our battery is empty. And then we can see that we are not longer able to, you know, we are, it's the aging process. And then at the end when the battery is empty, we are going to die. So it would be really important for us to make sure that we are not losing energy faster than it does on its own and that perhaps and that's possible too that we even start to to um, increase our energy or to keep our energy longer uh, than actually what is perhaps designed as we know people can turn 120. Um, the thing is, energy is burned by life itself. So, for example, the more stress you have, the more energy you burn, uh, the more you overwork and you don't take your healthy rhythms, the more you lose energy. Uh, the more you are moved by emotions and bad emotions and you are not able to bring emotions under control, that would consume energy. Chronic pain is a big energy uh, consumption field, uh, the same like chronic illness, and, and we want to stop that. We just want to be able to regain our energy, to regenerate, and that only can happen if we are able to go back into a healthy rhythm. Unfortunately, these days, everything is going fast. So everything is hurry 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 it can't be fast enough and who is the first and you know our time is is has sped up, speed up so much that we are losing so much energy and as well that we have no time actually for regeneration or we think we have no time but the, at the end we would pay the price for it so it is, it is of value if we have now frequencies that would allow us to support our bodies, not only in regeneration and, and in health and well-being, but as well to allow us again to rest and, and to relax more and to activate our parasympathetic nervous system instead of the, of the fight and flight mode that most of us are experiencing in those days. So if you look onto the, into the cell membrane voltage, so a healthy cell membrane voltage would be minus 70 millivolt. And we know, so the moment we start losing and, and uh, yeah, not looking after us with energy-wise, uh, then we know, for example, chronic disease goes lower than minus 70 millivolt. And a cancer cell starts with minus 30 millivolt. There was a Russian scientist and he was able to detect uh, cells in the body through a device. Many years I was around that and was able to detect, detect with the device which cells have been lower than 30 millivolt. So it was easy then to see uh, in which area of the body something was happening. Now we are able 
just to uh, use Healy and to use the resonance uh, um, tool to see what is needed in any given moment. And then we are able to rise our vibration. The reason for that is that, for example, in cancer cells um, or in chronic fatigue cells, the mitochondria are kind of shut down, so they are not using uh, ATP, so the, the energy form of the cells, um, and the cell is only producing on a fermentation process energy, and that's, that's much less than mitochondria do. So the moment we start to rise our vibration, to, to activate our frequencies, to uh, reorganize our frequencies, we are uh, healthy and we feel well and our life gets much easier. Let's talk about consciousness and uh, what is consciousness. Um, consciousness is actually what we fundamentally are. It is that shared I we all refer to when we are talking about I and we are kind of observer and the knowing field. So this energy field behind everything, just think of it like an empty room, that would be the field. And then into the empty room, we can put things into the room and we can take out things of the room, but the room never changes, okay? The empty room is just as a symbolic uh, picture would be that consciousness that we are. We are this empty room. And things are coming and going. It's, it's quite simple as a, as a symbolic picture. And we are the observer of what's coming into the room and what, what leaves the room. So, And this observing, the unfolding as one, we all are able to, to look into that. But the difference is that we are not able to see that in one go, is that... That, that an individual, uh, its own focused awareness is towards the, the individual environment. So when we are born in America or Germany, uh, we are born in a different environment and we focus with our senses on that environment and are not um, aware of the rest of the world. Only if we start traveling, then we have references and we are aware of different areas of the world. Okay, so it's all, it's all restricted by the focus of us, but in the background, we are this, this, this consciousness. We are consciousness. We are awareness. We are the observer. And on the field of consciousness, communication is happening through frequencies. So every frequency has an information and if we are in touch with the frequency, even if we are not able to see it as such, this frequency gives us an information and we can go into resonance with it. And quantum physics teaches us as well that we are, we all, our mind, our body and everything material around us is nothing more than a single vibrating energy field. This consciousness vibrating energy field. We even can say it's a breath, you know, it's a rhythm as well, in and out like our breathing. And communication is happening through this energy field in form of frequencies. That's in, in, uh, really important for us to understand because if we understand that, then we also understand what frequency is it that I really want to be in touch with? Is it really that I want to watch negative, um, you know, negative informations out there because it would have an effect on us? So we then choose to use the frequencies that brings us in harmony. And if everything is one, then everything is also a part of us. And if everything is one, then we can all work towards one goal and our bodies and minds turning to harmony, health and prosperity. Actually that, what we do as a community and if we share uh, what frequencies are, if we share um, harmony, if we share love and respect and, and being connected. 
And with the frequencies of healing, we swing together into the harmonious chords. And then we create the being that we desire in harmony with the laws of nature. Then we are back. Then we are, then we are not any more far out of us, but then we are back in us. And then we are resonating again with the field and we are resonating again with nature. And that's so beautiful, isn't it? So, thank you for listening and take care. Bye for now.